Awesome. All right. Hi, everyone. I am Mallory. I'm the MCTT of Fort Myers, the Fort Myers Market Center. And I'm really excited to introduce the next session that's coming up here uh, with one of our very own agents, Brett Ellis. He is an MRA agent in our office. He leads an incredible team um, at the office as well. He's an instructor. He teaches classes often. He even literally this morning, he taught at our team meeting and shared some really incredible resources and info. He's always uh, just a wealth of knowledge, um, you know, over all sorts of different topics, but specifically over numbers. If you have any sort of questions, he's really good at just knowing the numbers of our market and being informed and really helping his team, but also just people in the office. So it's been a really um, awesome just opportunity to know him over the last few years and him be just an incredible leader at our office and uh, lead, again, his team, but also the agents here. So I'm really excited for this next session as he um, goes over the budget model and, and those kind of organizational pieces, but also kind of talks about how he influenced that into his business. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Brett Ellis as he um, takes over and goes through the budget model here. Well, thank you, Mallory. And uh, yeah, it's always, it's a pleasure working with you and such great people at Keller Williams. And to be honest with you, I don't know how many people on the call just love things like the budget model and numbers and if you've got a maps coach, when your maps coach asks you to, hey, what are your numbers? What this? That I mean, how many people on the call just look, just live for that kind of stuff? Anybody? Or anybody kind of? Yeah. Wish they didn't have to ask me that all the time. I'll do it, Brett. I, I love my budget models. <laughs> so I love looking at numbers because I want to see myself making money. Yep. Well, and see, that's the thing. I came here from another company probably about six years ago. And the funny thing is, I said no to Keller Williams for the longest time. But the one thing that did attract me to Keller Williams is that they had the models, the systems, the technology, just a lot of things. But I never really wanted to analyze it because we were doing some big, big, big numbers. But there was a couple of years where we actually paid to come to work. Like, when you get all your expenses done, we spent more than we made. Now, I can chalk that up to the market turn and the, the financial crisis and all that stuff. And that happened to a lot of agents. And then I happen to know some top agents around the country. And that was a regular pr practice of theirs where they put up big numbers and everyone had the egos and, and you just some really big numbers, but they weren't bringing home like you would think. They might have worked off a one or 2% profit margin. And if one little thing went wrong, and if you don't study your numbers, you could be minus one or two or 3%. And if you're doing that on millions of dollars of GCI, that's not a fun place to be. So when we made the transition over Keller Williams, even though I don't love, and I was a finance major in college, so who'd have thunk, but I'll look at other numbers, but I don't want to look at my numbers. Well, through maps coaching and whatnot, we got into our numbers and we've made a transformation of our business. Now we may not throw up the big numbers, uh, that we did before. Mallory mentioned we were an MRA team, um, and that's true. But we, you know, we used to throw up some bigger numbers. But now, what falls to the bottom line is kind of more important. And I, I think, truthfully, when you do that, you're more in relationship with your um, relationships with your customers and that sort of thing. So I want to dig into that. It's it's from that premise this that I bring to you, kind of what I've learned and kind of going through the models and. Ryan, and by the way, I want you guys, Ryan, I don't mind questions. So if someone's got a question, just fire it away. We've got 45 minutes or so, and we'll get through all this. But if you've got questions, we're here to answer, ask them. So, so I'll keep my eye on the chat for you. Perfect. That's great. So let's get into it. I don't know which first screen you've got up. I've got several in front of me. But um, what I'd like to talk about is probably the number one thing would be where you're at in your business, and then what Gary says in the MRA book, you know, the the budget benchmarks. Do you have that, Ryan? I've got the uh, handout you had sent me. Do you want me to share that? Yeah, so uh, if there's one that calls budget benchmarks, and I don't know what page this is on in MRA, but at the end of the call, I've got a sp spreadsheet that we're you That's guys what? can have. We're more than happy to share that with you guys. Does everyone know what the budget model actually is? Can anyone tell me what the what what the numbers you're supposed to hit is in the budget model? 
30, 30, 40. 30, 30, 40. So, Brian, do you know what the 30, 30, 40 is? Cost of sale. That's one. Uh, and then you have your cost of um, cost of sale, your cost of doing business, and then what you actually make. Yep. So your operating expenses, that's kind of the cost to run your business, the cost of sale. And that's where I think a lot of the confusion is. Not more than 30% of that should be, go to that. And if you do that, if you can keep your 30, 30, 100 minus 30 minus 30 is 40. You should have a 40% net profit. This is why you'll see so many buyer agents um, sometimes on teams because they might be on a 50-50 split, but they don't have very much expenses. And they might think they've got some expenses, but just go try doing this on your own and you find out, you know, you, you know, a lot of this adds up fast and they don't, it's hard to hit that 40% net profit. But if you look at your numbers, use the MRA chart of accounts, and we switched over to that, that's helped with our accountant. Um, so let's say you make $100,000 a year. You spend 30% operating expenses. That would be salaries. Um, that would be, you know, that would be professional service. Uh, fees. Um, actually, I've got one thing here that says referral fees go into operating expenses, but technically, I think referral fees go into cost of sales. I've usually put them in cost of sale myself. Yeah, it's supposed to go in cost of sales. Education, coaching, your rent, your supplies, your technology, your cell phone, your internet, all of that, that's your operating expenses. You know, your signs, virtual tours, that's operating expenses, but your cost of sales is going to be your splits with your company, your splits with your team. So if you're a team leader and you're paying out, let's say you're paying out a 50-50 split with your buyer agent, every deal that they do, you're already negative on your 30%. Because your, your cost of sales is not supposed to exceed 30%. If you've got a referral fee, let's say you have a 25% referral fee. So let's just say a $10,000 check comes in and you're running a team. You've got a 25% referral fee and a 50-50 split. So you're down to 7,500 after the referral fee. So you, you log the team income, $10,000. 25% cost to sale out on the referral fee. Then 50-50 split, so 37.50. You're down to 37.50. On that one deal, you were at 37.5%. Now, you're gonna take this over all your deals and your hope is that you don't exceed 30% in that cost of sale. So you don't, I mean, I don't know that you want to build your entire business around referrals. Referrals should augment what you do and supplement and be extra on top of. But if you're living off of just referrals, then you haven't really built your business. So you might take referrals in the beginning and supplement after you get going. But if you live off referral only by agents from outside, then that's a risky business because what if those referrals dry up or go somewhere else? You run the risk that almost all your income could go somewhere else. So just, just be careful of that. But then we get into, you know, you got to watch your splits. So let's say you put a buyer agent on a 60-40 or 70-30 split. Now you're not, you're, you're not 37.5. You're, you're down to 30 or 40% before you ever hit a referral fee. Then you've got your KW splits. You've got all of that. And this is how agents can go broke and go out of business, or they can have a wonderful bang up year. And because they're out of model, they pay too much. When the market turns, they don't have the savings to withdraw to survive and to thrive. And I'm living that. Not that we paid those higher splits because we knew that, but we, we, where we didn't make money was on the operating side. We paid salaries. We paid advertising. We, we just spent money a lot of different places. And like I said, a few years we paid to go to work. That's not fun when you're working as hard as you ever have. And you've got to pump money from your savings into the business just to keep it going. Don't want to see anyone have to do that. Uh, and a lot of people can't do that. So um, now, are there any questions about cost of sale or operating expenses? If we have no questions. We have no questions. Question yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. 40% is the operating expenses and then 40% is your cost of sale? No. What is the 30? No, it's 30. 30% operating expenses, 30% cost of sale, 
and that should leave you 40%. 40 plus. Yeah, so it's 30, 30, 40. Now, I'm gonna go through some benchmarks. Uh, Ryan, I think that was the top of page six on that handout I had. Are we able to get that up on screen? Uh, yeah, give me one second. Um, okay. I'll put it in the chat and then I'll share it as well on screen. Okay, because in the MRA book, Gary talks about when you're building your business, some, sometimes you're going to go out of model and you're not going to hit those 30, 30, 40. And sometimes the bigger your business gets, there's like some donut holes where you, like in, in this example I've got, at 150,000 GCI, they showed someone who's at 49% net income. So that's greater than the 40. So the cost of sales at 13 and the expenses were at 38. So the whole darn thing ended up at a 49%. So they're a little high on expenses, a little bit low on cost of sale, but then you bump them up to 340. And this is what it kind of looks like that chart right there. And if we don't get it to you now, I think someone may have shared it in the Google Drive. Okay, so that's one of the spreadsheets we're going to work off of. And see if it's, uh, I don't think it's on that one. No, that's the only one I got is this one from me. Okay, no problem. Okay, so anyway, go back to my screen right now, and we'll come back to this here in just a second. So this is the benchmarks, and what you, you can see is as you hit higher numbers, Gary talks about your net income may go down. So once you get to 340, it may go down to 38%. It goes down to 30% at 640 because you're building that team. You're spending more money. It actually goes down to 28, 26, 22. But as you get back up into the 1 million, it's back to 39%. When you get to 2.5 million, it could go up to 40%. Because you're adding pieces of leverage. You may be adding some ISAs. You may be adding some lead specialists. You have, may have listing specialists, buyer agents. And you pay all those people and it comes out of. So just keep in mind, depending on where you are in your business, it's okay if you don't hit 40%, but that's what you should be shooting for. That's kind of your goal. And of course, if you only make $20,000 a year, you may not, depend on how much you spent, there's the benchmarks right there. So at the top of the page, you can, you can see that at 150, you're at 49 percent. I know it's a little bit small, so yeah, let's I was trying to see if I can make it bigger. Yeah, that's okay. There you go. There you go. There, much better. So in this in this hypothetical example, as agents grow their business, sometimes you start to lose profit once you start getting into certain areas, and then you grow it back. Now, 26 percent of 1.6 million dollars is, is still 416 thousand dollars income net income. So was that worth the risk of adding all those pieces and spending all that extra money? Yeah, they still made more than they would have if they only grossed 150 or 340. But they're not, they're not making that 40% that they should for. So as they moved up the chain, they started to, to net more. So that's, that's the whole point. This 30, 30, 40 isn't a hard and fast rule. It kind of depends on where you are in the business and where you're spending. You just use it as a guideline. And if you go out of model, just know that you're out of model and what can I do to rein this back in? Am I spending too much in cost of sale? Am I paying my team too much? Have you ever felt like for team leaders out there, everybody on my team is making money, but me, I can tell you those two years where we brought money to the table, I made zero. I made less than zero. And every per single person on my team from salaried person on down, put money in their pocket from the team, everybody, but my mother and I, and my father, when he was here. So that, that's a position you don't want to be in. Get your splits right um, so that you're not, you, don't, you just don't want to live out of model. If you do, you're going to be the one suffers. At the end of your career, when you don't have the retirement that you wanted, it's because your splits weren't right. And a lot of people say, well, I, will I be able to retain people? Will people want to work for me? Will they want to, they can, there's another team that's doing this, doing that. It's your all your value proposition. If you have a high enough value proposition, people will always, I, I was talking to a team last week and they have people that want to join them. There's a waiting list to get in. So, but I don't want to talk to just the team people. I want to talk to the single agents too. 
Yeah, because I, Brett, I want to make sure everybody is paying attention to this because this is the part right here where everybody kind of checks out. Yep. They really and check just, out on these numbers because they don't understand them. It might be over your head. So if we need to back up, we rather back up here before we keep going too much further because this is how you run a business. This is your business. So raise your hand if you uh, are not getting any news to go back or if you have a specific question. And also for like a new agent, a completely new. So, yep. and I'm not part of a team. How do I incorporate all this? Okay, so Ryan, let's go to that next screen that you just had up before this one. Okay. It's like a spreadsheet. Yep, I'll bring it up. So Keller Williams has a spreadsheet. I just, I just printed some of them, some of the pages from it, and we can share that spreadsheet for you. Yeah, I put it in the chat already, um, and I also have uh, the actual Excel spreadsheets that you gave me, and I'll share that in chat as well a yep. little bit. So perfect. So there's a way for anybody to track this stuff. Then it doesn't seem so daunting, and you can see kind of where you are. Give me one second. Get me back there. And Ryan, for me, while you're getting this up, some of this is like, what do I, what category do I put all this stuff in? Well, this spreadsheet's going to make it nice and easy because it's based off the MRA chart of accounts. So you'll have your 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 categories, and you just decide does this go in that category or that category? And it's all pre-done for you. All right, there we go. So can we blow that up just a little bit? And we'll just kind of scroll through it. We won't spend like all day on every single category, but I just do want to highlight a couple things. There we go. There we go. So in your income, you put all your income sources. So it could be referral income, leasing income, new construction, all types of income. And you're going to get to a number here. Now scroll down because I want to start looking at this cost of sales. Income's easy part. Agents get the income part down. They can put income in a spreadsheet so fast, you know, just like they can calculate their commission. It, I, you could, I could take the worst agent in math, but you tell them to multiply sales price times this commission amount, and they can get that calculation right every single time. So, but let's get down to the part where it starts to get a little wonky. So you've got your royalties to KWRI. You've got your buyer splits. Your referral paid out. I want you to start thinking about this as a profit loss statement because that's what it is. So you got mm -hmm. all the income that comes in. If so, if I pay a 25% referral fee or a 30% or whatever it is, all your transaction fees, everything here that's paid out, that becomes your total cost of sales. Then how much did it cost me to be in this business? Well, I... Had to get i have to keep my continuing ed going i have i've i've got an assistant and maybe it's a virtual assistant how much do i pay them why well, pay them 1400 a month to do whatever put all your costs into you know do i have a transaction coordinator do i pay an office transaction coordinator maybe it's 350 a deal or something put that in there how many deals did i do last month three deals times 350 maybe i paid 1100 or whatever just kind of put that in there and that starts to build your expenses now, some of you probably do some direct mail. You do some events, maybe a client event or a neighborhood event. Maybe you sponsor the ice cream party in your neighborhood. Put that in there. If you want to scroll down just a little bit. I keep going through here. Your listing management. Maybe you pay a photographer. Maybe you pay a sign guy. Put that in here. And look at this. And look at scroll down just a little more ryan at your office you may have they may give you a utility bill you may have property taxes you all your communications your internet that could be at home and office it could be your cell phone all these things that you do it's all pretty here for you all you got to do is plug in your news your continuing ed your car your insurance everything that you do that helps you run your business and at the end and the cool thing about this and just kind of scroll down to the bottom. You've got your total expenses. And it's all broken out to, for you. So you know, I should be at 30% of my expenses. I should be at 30% of cost of sale. And if I am, I should be at 40% here. And then you can look at your actual numbers and find out where you actually are. Now, let's say, Ryan, in this hypothetical example, 
you put in all your numbers for last year or year to date this year. And Rachel, we're going to make sure everyone gets a sheet, okay? So everything I share with you today, I don't mind that you have all of it. You can have the spreadsheet that we're going to go through. You can have these sheets. You can have, you can have it all for all I care. I want you guys to have it and benefit from it, okay? Now, let's say for, just for fun, we go back and put in from last year. And just take from your tax return, estimate the best you can. Your, your accountant, or you may have put all your advertising in one category. So just, if you don't know, just put it in the most appropriate category. And you might get here at the end of the year, your net income might be this, and you might be, your target was 40%, but you might say, I'm at 18%. Say, whew, I didn't have as good a year as I thought. I'm at 18% net income. So I've got two choices. I can look at where I can cut some expenses or it's telling me I should be doing more revenue for the amount of money I'm spending. So I'm either spending too much, I'm spending it on the wrong things or I'm not converting at a higher enough rate. So it tells me I need to increase my, my lead conversion and my closing skills. Maybe I'm not charging enough commission. Maybe I'm paying too much splits on, maybe I've got this referral source from this, co this company, I mean, pick one, it could be a Zillow, it could be a ideal agent, it could be anything. And I'm paying them 40 or 50%. And I'm finding out I'm not getting anywhere because of it. I, I did it, I agreed to pay a higher referral because I thought I'd get ancillary business from it and I didn't. So is it worth me doing that or do I renegotiate a split? Do I have agents on my team? I need to renegotiate something. Do Am I paying for marketing sources that just aren't providing me income? Maybe I've got bus benches and I can't attribute any income to the bus bench. Now, some things are going to be image advertising where people see you in the neighborhood. Maybe you've got a bus bench right outside the neighborhood you farm. And they don't tell you they called because of the bus bench, but they tell you it's because the mail out I got or the community event, the ice cream social you sponsored. And yet they see that bus bench every day. So it's okay if you can't contribute income, but you want to ask yourself those questions. Is that something that I, th I feel like I'm getting benefit from? And just go through line by line. And the, if you take nothing away from this at all, plug your categories into the right areas and then ask, where am I at with my 30, 30, 40? If you're not there, it's okay. Identifying the problem or identifying where you are is the first step. Now I can make changes. I want to pause right here and see if anyone's got questions, if this makes sense. See what we got here. Got anything on chat? Got some thank yous. Yes, we're going to get to the sheet. We'll make sure the sheet is put in the chat in a little bit. I got a comment, Brett. I mean, I get recruited all the time, constantly. Okay. If, if I didn't know these numbers, it's going to make me that much more ignorant to the fact of what I'm being recruited for. I could, I could hear a deal and think it's really, really sweet. My uh, growing up, my dad was a real estate agent as well, and he jumped from brokerage to brokerage to brokerage, and he didn't really know his numbers, and that was part of the problem. He didn't become successful until my mom joined him and showed him the numbers, and he stopped jumping around. Um, Tyler Williams, if you know your numbers, you can see where you're making your money, and you know you're going to make it here. If you get these uh, offers from these other companies, you can come and look at what they're offering you and see where it's coming from. Read the fine print, because most of the recruiters I've talked to, they're banking on the fact that we don't know our numbers, and they're also banking on the fact that we don't read the fine print. Even though we write contracts for a living, we don't read the fine print. So knowing your numbers right here is very important to know where you're getting the best deal. Everything's negotiable, right? Yeah, and, and let me piggyback on that. Excellent comment, Ryan. What I find is they, they, they know you don't know your numbers and agents are a lot like human beings. Like we are human beings, right? So we're a lot like, let's say a for sale by owner, for example. The first, what's the first question a for sale by owner asks you? Well, how much are you going to charge me? Now, my script is, well, I, I'm not going to charge you anything, but I'd be happy to sit down and show you what I earn. And, you know, th then we go through it. It's all your value proposition. But we as agents are just like the, f the for sale by owners that we abhor. It's it's like, we, we too are human beings and we care, like, how much am I paying? But it's not just how much you're paying, it's what am I getting? And one of the beautiful things about Keller Williams is 
we show people how to go through their numbers because if that's all you're worried about splits, like we're, we're getting ready to be in a shift. Am, am I, you know, everyone kind of knows that, right? And what typically happens in a shift, because I've seen this too many times, agents start looking for a higher split and that's going to be their salvation to stay in this business. If someone will just give me a higher split, like maybe I'm 70, 30 until I'm capped and, and whatnot. But if I can find somebody to give me an 80, 20 or a 90, 10 or a hundred, give me a hundred percent split. I could stay in this business longer, but you won't because at Keller Williams, you could be a hundred percent. But we teach people how to know their business, know their numbers. Just flipping companies isn't going to help you stay in business. It just buys you about two extra months of the business. But if you don't change what you're doing and look at your numbers, that two months isn't going to get you anywhere. You're just prolonging the inevitable. You might as well just go get another job somewhere else right now. But the quicker you can log in and dive in and get into your numbers, you can salvage a real estate career. There's no reason to change. And what you'll find is, when you really start looking at the numbers, that's attractive split they're offering you. It's a lot like a real estate agent offering uh, a for sale by owner. Hey, I'll list your home for just a, a few amount of dollars. But what are you actually going to do for them? Are you going to get them top dollar? Keller Williams helps agents get top dollar for their home. And, and what it's called is helping you build a career worth owning, lives worth living. So I'm going to put more net money in my pocket by following the models and systems of Keller Williams than I am getting a higher split somewhere else. So does that kind of piggyback on what you were thinking, Ryan? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's the craziest thing for agents to go out and start looking somewhere else uh, when you've got everything you need right here. The other thing is this. You've already been outside, so you know what it was like out there. I've been out there. This is the best place. Now, people are attracted to shiny things. You know why they're attracted to shiny things? It's because they're not doing the dull things, looking at their numbers. So everything else looks shiny and everything else looks like the quick and easy solution, but it's not. If you do the dull things, everything becomes shiny. Like my business looks shinier now than it did when I first came here because I, I went in and looked at and I followed the systems. Should have done a long time ago, but that's another story. The other point I was going to bring is also people are attracted to people who have their stuff together. So when you are in model, people are attracted. They say, that's how I want to be. That's how I want to run my business. I'm tired of the rat race. I'm tired of working 12 hours a day. I did 18 billion in production on my own. No assistant. I'm burnt out. I just can't take any longer. Well, there's leverage points you can do within model. And you'll have a happier, healthier life. And you'll make more money than you did by not having an assistant. So it's just learning the KW models. And then the other thing is this. People are attracted to people who have it going on, who, who follow the models. And if you're out there looking at other companies to see if there's another shinier object, how would you ever recruit somebody to be in your, in your downline? See, you could get that passive income, but nobody's going to follow you when they know you're not, it's not working for you. You're not happy. So I see agents are always out there interviewing, but they're trying to build a downline. I'm not following an agent like that. I'm going to follow an agent that I think has got going on. Be that agent, get your house in order, and people are going to be attracted to you. And you'll have a happier life with your, your family, and you have more money in your pocket than just trying to build it, build it, build it, build it, and just burning yourself out. Any other questions? The thing is, the main thing is, it's, you're the, what's important, not the brokerage. Brokerage is there. It is important. The brand is important. However, you're more important. So I don't want to make this a commercial into. It's not. Understand. I also want to make sure that you guys understand the numbers well enough to, if you have those conversations, see what is best for you. Keller Williams stands behind you. And what I mean by that is they provide you the models and systems, but it's not all about Keller Williams. You won't see a Super Bowl ad that says Keller Williams. And the reason you should do business with us is because of Keller Williams. No, you might see a Ryan Yarborough ad uh, somewhere, but it'll be about Ryan Yarborough powered by, or Keller Williams is behind him, standing behind him. And he gets all the benefits of Keller Williams, but you're dealing with business with uh, Ryan Yarborough. That's what I love about where we are. 
All right, I put all the links in the chat. I've also put the documents in the chat. So if you, for whatever reason we've seen in the past where these documents, when I put them in on their own, they don't allow you to download them or you can't see them, especially if you're on a cell phone driving or something. So I went ahead and put links in there for you to directly download them as well. If we have one minute, you could open up one of the spreadsheets and you could just plug a number in there and show people how easy that is to do. That they could do that at their leisure. Are you able to get one? I think I sent you a couple of spreadsheets. Yeah, I put all three of them in there. Okay. Well, I put four actually. The first one you gave me, plus okay. these. So throw one of those up on screen and just uh, throw in a couple pretend numbers. Uh, I got the economic budget planner up here. Okay. That. Yeah, that's a good. That's a great one because. I'm, today, we're talking about the budget model, but that one gives you the economic and the budget model all in one spreadsheet. So you've got your economic model here and go down at the bottom, click on, and I can't see the bottom right now, Ryan, but you've got some tabs. Economic model, we got budget model, full chart of accounts, and your p &L. Yeah, so go down to... Um, I, I can't see the bottom of the screen on my screen right now. What are those other tabs? Yeah. Where you can, where I, you can start. First one I have is economic model. The second one's budget model. Okay. And we got full chart of accounts. Yep. And then we got the P and L. And agents can put their numbers in there and know to automatically do the calculations, correct? Correct. Yep. So it's all right there for you. Go get your tax return or the latest p l that you're working on, or just go get a shoebox with all your numbers. Hey, I spent this amount of money on on internet ads or Facebook ads through command, or I, I sent out a couple of mail outs to some of them and just start plugging and playing those numbers and it'll light up and it'll show you where you are. It's really, when you do it like this, it's more fun than just having to think about, oh my gosh, where am I gonna get all that information? I don't, and I'm not, not sure I'm gonna like what I see when I get there. It's okay. You don't have to share it with your whole office. Share it with your coach if you have one, or just know what it is yourself. If you know your numbers, you can start to make changes. It's the people who don't know the numbers don't know they're spending too much or they're not converting at a high enough rate. First thing I'm going to say to myself is I'm not converting at a high enough rate. I got to go take a class. Like I'm struggling with sellers right now. I'm giving away the farm. I'm giving away my commission or I'm spending too much for what I'm charging or I'm just, I'm going on 10 appointments. I'm only getting one or two. Okay. My value proposition is not right or my scripts and dialogues aren't right. Market Center's got solutions for you. Maybe you're excellent at that, but you're just spending more than you'd like. Okay, fine. Maybe I need a leverage piece. Fine. You know how much you can afford to spend. Then you go out and plug the leverage piece in. And what we find, Ryan, is when, let's say you get a very busy single agent and they're just working as hard as they can. When they add one piece of leverage, it frees them up to do more of the A type stuff they should be doing and less of the B, C, and D and they end up making a lot more money. They might pay a, a salary person, say 30 grand a year, but they put an extra 300,000 in their pocket. That's a 10 to one payoff. It's wise to do that, especially when you feel overloaded and you know, and maybe you get a virtual assistant to do those tasks for $8,000 and you still put two, 300,000 in your pocket. That's more than 10 to one payoff. But until you know your numbers, it's hard to know where you are. So that's all, that's all I'm saying. Figure out where so you are. Is great, and thank you for sharing this with us. Again, it's in the chat, and once we this video is being recorded, so we'll make sure that this is up on the website. And you'll have direct download links on the website that you can download from as well. So feel free if you have other agents in your office that didn't get to watch this, and you think this would be helpful for them, you can share this with them. Or if you're looking to add to your downline, you want to bring people into Keller Williams. Again, this might be another thing that you can share, or make a smart plan out of it and share the links back to our website. Well, I've got two recruiting appointments. I just had conversations last week and it was easy. And I was two for two. They picked up the phone and we talked and I asked them, what's your pain point right now? What are you seeing in the market? And where, how's things going with your business? And they started telling me some pain points. I've got some models. I could sit down with them over a cup of coffee and say, what are you seeing? Now, if I ask them their numbers, are they going to know their numbers? If they're like the typical agent, they might know, but they might not know. And that's okay. And you say, well, this is the kind of stuff we have available to us. In fact, you could say, you know, agent, I, I don't feel like I know my numbers well enough either, but here's what I'm really excited about. I know a general guideline of where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the process right now of evaluating, and I think I'm 
too high here and I'm not getting the conversions. What do you see? Are you are you spending money in that area? Are you getting anything out of it? Oh yeah, I, I had to quit that. That wasn't getting me anything. Me too. And it's kind of fun because as I go through this process, I'm starting to see more money come to my bottom line. And this is the stuff we teach. We're having a class on that next week on, could be about conversions. It could be about marketing, where to spend money on the internet, social media. Could could be, a, what I would encourage people to do is get your class calendar from your market center and find out. That way, when you're talking to people and you ask them, what do you, how do you see the market? Oh gosh, you know, I'm I've been running into that too. Would you, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm thinking about starting a mastermind group over that very issue. Well, is that something you'd be willing to help us out with and participate in? Now, what do most people like to do? Yeah, they like to be heard. And they, they like to tell their story. Like, I'm struggling with this, or I'm struggling getting listings, or now I'm struggling getting buyers, motivated buyers, whatever it is. They design something, share with them some useful information, be, be, you know, come from contribution, bring some value. And next thing you know, you start filling up your, your pipeline. So, and, and your, your profit share and you help build their career, their business, as well as your own. And we learn more through teaching. Now I'm not saying you're teaching, but the very fact that you're bringing this up to another agent, and you're willing to go over it with them. You are looking at your own first. You're helping yourself and you can also help others that way. That's win-win to me. I love this uh, full chart of accounts. It's very comprehensive. Yeah, and that's fraud. those are MRA agent accounts too. So I redid our accounts the way we used to do it and tried to do it with the more the way Gary had it. And now it, it's kind of the same language. It makes the same kind of sense. I'm sure your um, CPA loved it too. He, he actually did. He kind of fought me in the beginning because he didn't understand. Um, but we went from a low percentage. We hit last year uh over a million dollars in income we i think we were at 47 percent, and we never would have done that before we started looking at this we might have been i don't know i have to go back and look maybe we're at 20 percent or something that's if we were at 20 that's a 27 percent difference on over a million dollars that's over two hundred seventy thousand dollars that falls to a bottom line versus going in other vendors pockets you know all right, what, let's, let's see if we can get some ahas so far. Anybody yeah. got some ahas they want to share? Jackie's saying she gets an error with the links. Let's see if I can put something else in. I'll make sure. Uh, Might be a sharing permissions or something. This should be a direct download, so it should be open to everybody. Um, I'll check on it again, again, though, for you. And again, I'll make sure that these are, I have them and I can make sure on our website, they're hundred percent ready to be downloaded. So we just got a nice new shiny computer that runs much faster. So I should have these videos done much quicker. Uh, hopefully have them up before the weekend's over. So hopefully Monday, you guys will be able to see these and download them all. Um, if you had to have a question, because keep in mind, some people are going to be watching this after it's recorded. A lot of people will. But for those people, if you had to come up with a question, what would you ask such that by asking it would help them when they watch this later? Everybody who registered for this, sorry to jump in, but everybody who registered for this, I'll just make sure I email these out as well. Who's, who's got a question or? 30, 30, oh, Brett, I'll, I'll jump in here. It's Brett Bishop. Um, I, I would say that question is, one, do you know your numbers? And if not, we've got some great whip worksheets that'll help you with that. Because a lot of the problem for most agents is they don't even know where to start. And that tool that you shared, that um, the worksheet with the P&L, that's an amazing tool. Thank you for that. It takes a daunting task, something that seems overwhelming. And it's, when you, when you just sit that print it out or something, look at it, it becomes easier. You're like, oh, what was I afraid of all this time? that's not that hard i i can get this and then when you actually do it it sort of lighten up you're like oh yeah it is daunting until you start actually running a business once you start filling out your pnl you're actually starting to run a business so until you know it you're just dabbling you yep. can make a lot of money but you don't know where that money's going you can have good numbers and you don't want to look at this because you're like i don't think i'm gonna like what i find and i got good numbers 
Well, what you might find is you're better than you think you are, or you're worse than you think you are, and and now you've got something you can look at. Well, and either way, Brett, you win. <laughs> to Brett's point, Ryan, with what you said, yeah, you could be making a lot of money, but if you don't know where it's going, you may not be keeping a lot of money. I can flat out guarantee you I was in that position. And since I came to Keller Williams, forget splits, forget all that. Since I came to Keller Williams and started following the MRA models, it's it's just working out a whole lot better for us. But you won't you won't do that unless you're willing to take a look at it. And I, I know real estate agents, they like to sell, they're people people, they like to get out. That's where the magic happens. But what good is it for you to make magic with everybody else on this planet? And at the end of your career, long time down the road, you don't have the retirement that you want. It's because you didn't take care of yourself or look at your own stuff. Jack, we're saying MREA is millionaire real estate agent. Yes. So we're saying MREA to chart of accounts. Yep. And that's a good question because everything that we talk about really stems from that MREA book. And if you've read the book once, you haven't really read it because I read that book once and all I did was read it, but I didn't get it. And then when I start going in depth, these chapters, what I would say is just read it once, just casually read it and then start looking at each model, start looking at each thing and really going in depth. And then you, then you start to get it. It's kind of like the four legged uh, chair and until you really understand and can operate on all four legs, you're kind of wobbly, right? So master each and every one of these models that we're teaching today. And you're not going to, don't be scared if you only have one of them down or if you have none of them down. At least you're here on these classes learning a little bits and pieces of it and keep on reading that book over and over and over and you'll get it and start mastering it. Yep. And Gary's top 100 doesn't have mastered yet. Now think of a four-legged chair. And if, if you got a, all four legs of the corners, and you take one leg out, it's probably going to fall over. If you take, let's say the front leg is in the front, the two in the back, like a triangle, you can sit there for a while and you'll do fine un unless you get too far left or too far right. And then you go off the rails, but you can sit there. You can live there. Well, that's what the typ typical agent does. They sit in that three-legged triangle chair. And if they go left or right, they go off the rails. What I'm saying is, it, it, what Ryan's saying is, if you get that four leg and you start running here, it won't matter if the market shifts. You'll be good for it. And then you go, you shift from the MRA tactics over to the shift tactics. And now you just start taking somebody else's market share. It's like, it's mine for the taking. And you start building. You could actually build your business going into a down market. And if you have a month or two that's down for you while you adjust or while your sellers adjust, you're okay because you're sitting on four good legs. It's the agents who are sitting on three legs, either as a triangle or in the corners, they hit that shifting market and they're not okay. This is why the budget model matters. So you can be sitting on four legs and you can thrive in a down market. Average agent, even good agents get that down market on three legs and it's rough, even if you're good. And I know some good agents that have had it rough. Right now, uh, we're in Austin, they're telling us to make sure we're cutting expenses. And that's because they're thinking of the market we're going into. They're not worried about the market we're in. They're thinking about the market we're going into. So the reason they're saying cutting expenses is because we're not going to be having listings flying at us anymore, right? So if you know your chart of accounts, you're going to know where to cut those expenses from. If you don't, you're going to have to sit down and do this chart of accounts. Otherwise, you may be out of business. So understand your numbers and know where you can make the cuts. It's kind of like going through and looking at all the subscriptions. I got Netflix, I've got um, Hulu, I've got all these different subscription services piling up right here. And they're all like $9 to $20 each. That all adds up. So look at that stuff, knowing where they all come from and knowing where you can cut it is important. Which ones bring you joy? Cut out the rest. Which ones bring you business? Cut out the rest. All right. Very good. Anybody else got anything they want to add? Did you guys get anything out of it? I see some of you there working. I see some black screens. I see some empty offices. Well, we have to process all the information. Yeah, it's a lot of information. I think, I think when you get it in front of you, and, and here's my challenge to you. 
don't just walk away from this and do nothing. At least download it, print it out, maybe play with the spreadsheet a little bit, and then and then just start putting numbers in and then see how you do. And I think if you do that, it won't feel as daunting. It won't, you won't be afraid and you'll say, this is kind of fun. I never thought numbers would be fun, but now I got a roadmap. Here's where I could do better. I either have to improve my conversions or I have to cut some money, something, but I want myself and my family to be good this year and a and long time down the road too. I'll take it one step further. I challenge you guys to go to your calendars and time stamp this right on your calendar somewhere. Time block it. Make sure you've got at least 15 minutes to look at it a week. Uh, go ahead and put some more time in there to fill it out and get it all ready. But every week, go back and get it squared away and know your numbers. That way, what if Gary Keller was to say to you, hey, show me your PL? Would you be able to pull it up? That's right. And then, that every Friday. and then keep in mind too, if this helps me, who else could I help? Like when you're doing a co-broke deal with another agent, ask them, what are you seeing in the market? What, what, where are you feeling pain? What's that look like? Gosh, you know, I was just going over this on a class the other day about this. And I made three simple changes and it's putting $32,000 more to my bottom line. How'd you like sit down and have a cup of coffee? Man, we'll talk about how something like that could work. And, it, and you can stay at your same brokerage. It's not like you have to come to Keller Waves to do it. Just come from contribution. Then you start pulling, pulling stuff like that out. They're like, where'd you get that? Oh, our company, this is what we do. Don't feel bad if you don't have it either. If you were on for the very first call this morning with Gary and Nikki, one of the big things they brought up that they uh, were embarrassed about is the fact that they had to show Gary Keller their PL and they had no idea what they're doing. And it was embarrassing. So if you want to go back and watch that, when we put these uh, recordings out, you'll see on um, kwsouthfloridaregion.com slash videos, they'll be posted by Monday. You'll be able to go back and watch them and this one, and you'll be able to see them talking about what their biggest failures were and where they learned and how they became MREA agents that Gary interviewed. Um, I'll tell you, every agent you look up to, every single one of them has been embarrassed. We've been called out and it's like, oh, oh, yeah, I guess I do need to do that. I guess, but I'm doing so great here, but yeah, that's, that's bad. And, or I don't know. It's like, and, and everyone thinks you got it going on, but there's one of those areas like, man, I have no clue. Your PML is so, like your map, right? We are running a business. We're not just selling real estate. You are like, the cool thing about this is you're running a small business that could become a big business, but you're just like the meat, the meat shop guy down the street and the restaurant is you're, you're saying your business, this is a business. You're not just, Hey, I'll quit my job and go to real estate for flexibility and time. No, you're a full blown business. And when we start looking at it like that, like, and we can make a lot more money than they can. The question is, can we keep a lot more money? The answer is yes, we can, but we probably won't keep it until we start looking at it. Thank you, Brett. I appreciate you. My pleasure. Thank you, Ryan. Always, always fun working with you.